Okay, um, uh, let's, uh, let's reconvene. You guys can con uh, continue to eat, but I just, um, I'd like to introduce to you two of my favorite people. Um, uh, we have uh, Terrence Chen here, and he is in grade nine, and he has been involved in CanU since, um, since he arrived in Canada in grade five. He came in grade four, and in grade, it came to Canada in grade four, and in grade five, he became a part of CanU. So CanU has been synonymous with his uh, experience in Canada. Terence is, uh, I don't want him to get all, uh, you know, big-headed and stuff, but he's a, he's a genius, um, and he's really working on all kinds of skills in his life. I'm very, very proud of him. He's uh, becoming a leader in his school and in his community. Uh, he is an inspiration to his little sister, and uh, he's doing well. He's a kind of a little bit of a creator. Uh, he designed a water uh, distillation uh, system this summer in our summer leadership program. And uh, I know that Terence is going to make a huge difference in the world. Uh, and part of it is because of the influence of his mentors and his instructors and the program coordinators who have been a part of his life the last four years and now this year, in, uh, his fifth year. So we'll hear from Terence a little bit later. And then this is Annette Sanchez Ellis. And Annette has been involved in Can You since she's been in grade five as well. She's in grade eight now, and she is one of my favorite people. Uh, she is emerging as an incredible student, an amazing leader, a tremendous big sister, and uh, her family is a fantastic Can You supportive family, and we are looking forward to all the great things that Annette is going to accomplish. Not to put too much pressure on her, but... Um, uh, and it's not pressure because it's come so naturally and easy to her. And uh, you'll see when you hear her speak, she's got a gift uh, t of communicating clearly and beautifully. And uh, so we're looking forward. You're going to have, she's not going to be in part of the, uh, part of the Inspire program this year, but we'll, uh, she's going to be part of a little group that I'm assembling, as Terrence is too. I'm calling them the Magnificent Seven, but don't say that to them because I don't want them to know that I think they're magnificent. And we're going to be working on special projects together over the year, uh, me and these seven uh, grade eight and nine kids. Uh, we're going to be fixing the school system. We're going to be uh, uh, debating with politicians. We're going to be doing special research projects. And so Annette is going to be a big part of that little uh, group that will be working together this year. So I'd like you to welcome Annette and Terrence and uh, give them your attention. Thank you. Hi. I've been participating in Can You since grade five, and I'm now at grade eight at Equal River Heights School. My mentors have given me a look at what it's like to be a physiotherapist, pharmacist, or in orthopedics. I've also worked with hands-on rehabilitation, optometry, ultrasound, and many other subjects. Without the guidance of the mentors, I would never have understood the possibilities and never realized the opportunities. The mentors have great, meant a great deal to me because they've explained their experiences with the subject. And in some cases, since you're all university students, you may, be, you may have or be studying the subject we're being taught. And what is really special is that usually those mentors would expand and express and really take the time to see if we understand. Even if you're not someone who's gone into that subject in university, you will be trying to get everyone engaged and having an amazing time to the point where we kids want to learn and understand more to see the opportunities for the future. I would never have thought that I wanted to become a doctor in the future, but with Can You, I know that now. You need to know that you will make a huge impact in the lives of the participants and change not only their future, but the way they see the world. You will also see this experience will change your life. You need to have patience and know that kids want to know more and they all have the potential to succeed. If you give the kids an opportunity, they will keep up and want more. This is what Can You is. Creating the understanding of the opportunities and the need to work to reach them. Soon, hundreds of kids will be huddling at their school freezing while they wait for the bus to arrive and take them to Can You, all lo looking forward to what they will get involved in, 
Later, parents will be freezing as they wait for their kids to come back because the bus is not always on time. And they will hear all about what happened and what they've experienced. Kids can't unlearn what they've experienced at CanU, and it can only have one impact that will encourage them to keep on learning and understand. The experience will impact their schoolwork and the way they spend time with others. I can tell from the enthusiasm of the mentors that I've worked with that they really love what they hear from the kids and the response. No one is going to think it's a waste of time or regret being involved. You will see how important can you is to the kids and how important it will become to you. So get ready to make an impact and set an example that will change your life as well as the lives of the kids you meet. Be the change, make a difference, make an impact. Thank you. Hello, my name is Terrence Chen and I have been a student in the CanU program for four years. In fact, when I started attending CanU, I had just moved to Canada. I have been part of the programs I'd run during the school year and two summer leadership programs. I'm here today to talk about what, what it means to be a really great mentor. Almost everyone feels inspired by famous people, so I will use a lot of famous quotes in my speech in order to get my points across. In my opinion, the most important thing about being a mentor is that you shouldn't tell kids what to do, but rather inspire them to explore what they can do. A famous quote from William Butler Yeats, I, uh, I think he's just like a poet or an author about education, it's that education is not the feeling of a pail, but the lightning of a fire. What this means is that you are not the source of the knowledge, but rather the key to the knowledge. You don't make the students achieve greatness, you unlock the greatness that is already within them. That is a very hard thing to do, however, a quote from some random person long ago was, you don't do the easy thing, but the right thing. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, you have to make the students realize that they can achieve their dreams. However, the problem is that a lot of students aren't willing to pursue their dreams because they are afraid to. One of the reasons most people are afraid uh, uh, to try and accomplish stuff, it's because they think it's impossible, because no one has ever done it before. However, just because no one has done something before doesn't mean it's impossible. Another reason why people often don't want to do something is because other people think they will fail, or they say it's a stupid idea and, they, and everybody should just be normal or average. However, being average, it's not good. That is because if everyone was the same, nothing would ever change in this world. If nobody decided to be different and innovate and change the world, we would still be living like cavemen. Luckily, there were people who were brave and willing to innovate, and those innovators changed the world for good. A perfect example of an innovator who changed the world was Steve Jobs, the founder of the Apple Corporation. Steve Jobs never quit at the goal he wanted to reach, even though other people told him that he can't do it. Steve always accomplished, uh, accomplished things, even though everyone else told him that he would fail. A really good quote from Steve Jobs is, Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. What this means is that in order to really succeed, <coughs> you can't play by the rules. Sometimes you have to think different and do things in a completely different way. In fact, Steve Jobs is my role model. That isn't because I really like Apple products. Like, in fact, I don't like some things about Apple. It's only because Steve Jobs had a passion for changing the world for the better. And you can really learn from people like him. That's what I think a good role model should be. A mentor should be a role model for his or her students. This doesn't mean you should completely be like Steve Jobs. It definitely like Donald Trump either. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. So anyway, so okay. Another really interesting thing about Steve Jobs is that like um, a lot of people said he was, and uh, he was like he sometimes acts like an idiot because uh, he when he really has a great idea, 
people like uh, he he would just like sort of preach it to the world, and, and uh, people would say like, "Well, that has never been done before." And then like, and then he would uh, constantly bicker with people about the smallest and tiniest things, like all the details and and stuff like that. So a lot of people said like he was, and they really use real words to describe what kind of a person he is. But like. Like in my opinion, so like you don't have to agree with me, but like you can be like uh, annoy people if your intention is good. If you want to change the world, I think you should be. But if you like annoy people just just for the sake of doing it, and you don't achieve anything along with it, like you know Donald Trump, yeah, he he's really yeah, <laughs> then then that's really bad intentions, and that's a really bad thing. But anyway, so you should all pass a message onto the kids who you help that they should sh they should never be afraid to be different and change the world. And that's my talk on what a great mentor should be. Thank you for listening. Thank you.